Pennies Going In Raw is a production of iHeartRadio. The opinions expressed in the following podcast are for general informational purposes only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual or on any specific security or investment product. It is only intended to provide education and entertainment about the financial industry and the stock market. Enjoy! On this episode of Pennies Going In Raw, we talk about red light, green light. Going hard when the market's hot and not when it's cold. You find out life's this game of pennies. Oh, you guys know we only have a 40% runner. Hello? 40% right is a fucking killing. We've been compliant for too long. It's time we go to war. I don't have a Roth. You know so much about the market that his brain doesn't have enough room for grammar. Hey, who told me about Idex? It's going up a shit ton now. Rob, 4%, baby. No way. 4 fucking percent. You asked the exact same question with two words <laughs> different. It's like, fuck, man. I just got dick whipped for like 20%. And now that f***er's up like 50. I bet Warren Buffett never did that. I'm just making this voice memo to call out unusual whales to a fight. The pennies we need are everywhere around us. Pennies. 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 Going in raw. Featuring Dan. Deity it dips. And Hugh Honey. Produced by Vinny. And Christian. Let's, Let's go, go, baby. Welcome back to another episode of Pennies Going In Raw. Today is Wednesday, November the 17th. And, you know, the past two days is like, especially Monday. It's like, it, I mean, everyone's blaming the, the no volume, all this stuff, all these swings that were going so hot the past few weeks just started to, to finally retrace a little bit. Um, but, you know, other people finding some success and on Tuesday. However, you know, a lot of people still getting wrecked on swings and it kind of like brings us back to this you know we got to go hard when it's hot not when it's not but what have you been seeing the past two days and especially as someone who's been trading hard these these past couple weeks and now we're getting into a slower time and let's say you're still really over leveraged or maybe not over leveraged but you still got a lot of exposure out there I'm inside the same boat. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty leveraged as well at the moment and just because things aren't mooning doesn't mean that we're inside a shitty market. It just means that things aren't mooning right now. Like if anything, you should want everything to take a break and uh and cool off for a minute because it, it what ends up happening is we get into a situation where everything moons for 3 weeks and then the next 6 months is dead. I, I hate that shit. So I'm okay with this with this let it go let um let it go for a little bit let everybody um you know get their panties twisted because everything is not mooning hell like I'm I'm watching some of my swings like I I'm down a I was down a I was down a good buck the last 2 days and uh, and when I look at it it's like they're trading at a third of the volume of last week it's all selling pressure and and it's only down 5%. Last week it was down thir- I mean last week it was up 30%. So if I have a swing that's up 30% but down 5%, I'm still net up 25% and that down that that minus 5% was on a third of the volume. <laughs> that that's I'm fine with that. I'm okay with things consolidating. Uh just cuz again, just cuz they're not mooning doesn't mean that uh that this is a shit market uh, like like t- was today a little bit of a wasteful day for me like did i just sit there and monitor six swings all day yeah but am i okay with that yeah build a thesis continue to ask yourself is my thesis working out okay if your thesis was just i'm gonna buy and it's gonna moon that's not a real thesis but if you can sit there and say has anything fundamentally changed is the catalyst still intact it fundamentally is everything still intact and am, am i seeing any warning signs stuff like that those are the things that you need to on these days that it's kind of slower it kind of feels like uh like you're wasting the day you know it, it, it that's part of trading okay it's patience okay when you want to and and of course make sure that you have some cash like i'm oh, i'm i have more money on the market than i would prefer but I'm okay with running out of buying power some days because that just means that there's tons of opportunities. That, that's all that, that means. As long as you're not lowering your risk 
as long as you're not lowering, you know, your um your level as to what you'll enter a trade, and as long as you're keeping that high risk management, you want to run out of buying power. Uh, it, just because things aren't mooning, you don't want them to moon all the time. In fact, you want to pull back. I uh, I was talking to someone else about one of my swings the other day, and I and it was about a dollar and a half range, and I said, yeah, pull back to nine because that'll get rid of the scalpers. You know, they'll stop out. And that gives me an opportunity to re-add it higher and build support. That's all that that does. We're just building support across the different across the different teams. And Rivi, uh, I, I, RIVN, that took a lot of the volume out of the market. You know, SPY's been inside like this slow negative gamma uh, squeeze the past day or two. It, it, and that's okay. That's perfectly okay. We're inside a really good position. This is when true traders are going to have patience. They're going to add on dips. Maybe if something opens up five six percent you sell some and uh and and hopefully we have a sick end of year and i think we will so you a lot more comfortable adding on the dips whenever it's happening on such low volume like what you're seeing right now oh yeah oh yeah because i i won't chase um I, i'm with size i won't chase something with size so when it dips i'm i'm like sitting there waiting i'm like I, i'm sitting there waiting to accumulate because and, and i'm okay with getting in there big again as long as nothing's uh, uh, with as far as a thesis change the one thing that that i think really helped my trading out was the saying the stock will always dip no matter if it goes 1000 2000 10000 percent there will always be a dip and i think that that when i when i when i would start to buy something and it would dip from there i mean it just seriously took me 2 years to realize that that like oh shit like i'm buying almost the top and it's dipping i when i'd be selling is when i should be buying and uh, and vice versa and, and and that's what really changed my trading for me because realizing that there's always a dip gives you a chance to not have FOMO, I feel, because you're always because you're waiting for that dip. And secondly, you know, even if it's a five, six percent dip, you know, you now have a little bit extra breathing room than if you just buy it on like a on like the fifth green candle. Yeah. And and what you've been seeing a lot in this week's and mainly today's market was, you know, a sector kind of starting. And even though it was really dead on Monday, it seemed like the EV sector kind of lit up with Lucid and Fisker. Are you expecting more of that heading in to the end of the week or should we expect more sector plays at all? Yeah, no, I think sector is going to be hot. The one thing that I really scaled into and I, and I probably did catch some some FOMO with that was uh, was uh, the weed sector. So I'm pretty heavy in weed across the board. I, I'm kind of staying away from from the smaller um, uh, from the smaller cap weed names. Um, I'm just I'm I'm just staying away from them this time. I do have some Kern, but uh, but I'm really heavy into the MSOS options for uh, December, January, and uh, 2023 January. Um, shout out to Wolf of Weed Street. And, uh, and I think weed's going to make a big run into the end of the year. Uh, I mean, I know that we talked about it before, and I was, I was getting tagged inside a few posts about, uh, about how we called the weed, weed, uh, the weed sector to run. And, I mean, it, it did run. It ran like 5 6%. But I, I truly think that weed can, like, go 20% into the end of the year. And that's why, like, I, like, I truly don't usually take big positions into uh, – into like a into options but um weed i, I have a pretty good i have a pretty good size uh, option position on on a tuesday's dip on the msos yeah you know what sector i'm expecting to really light up what the haircut sector um yeah you know, yeah so i'll, I'll kind of give like how it happened um so obviously back in april i got a really shitty haircut uh from Supercuts. And it was around the the price of the stock, which is RGS, was at like thirteen. All right, let me and pull it up. I, I just got my first haircut, like since then, uh, like the last week. Got it last week. Went to an actual barber, uh, so you know, it was, you know, it's a little different. Um, <laughs> instead of a supercuts, because everyone told me not to go to a supercuts, but I quote tweeted it and said, "I'm going to get a haircut for the first time since this one." My initial tweet was, I'm shorting the shit out of Supercuts back in April. Well, 
boy oh boy did i call top on that it dropped all the way down to like 275 added a little bit under three uh it's on like a little pullback to like the 340s now but i was looking at it i'm like damn boy did 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 we find the bottom it got crazy volume the past like week or so so yeah did uh, you see what came out today no i just uh i just sent it to you someone bought like eight percent of the company perfect yeah it was probably me um <laughs> no but uh but no i mean it's like fine i was like it's kind of what we were talking about like a month ago with finding these things that were just so 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 beaten down and i'm looking yeah. at it and i was like i mean i don't want to get ahead of myself i was doing a little dd man and i was i'm feeling hey, I, you know hey, not, i remember the party city dd baby well yeah i mean well the dd i did on it it was definitely bearish but uh no <laughs> but i mean uh it's definitely like kind of those things where it's like just getting reminded and just finding those ones from a long time ago and be like, shit, this one's beaten down. It's finally time to get back in. Let's, I mean, it's almost like catching bottoms. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. I, dude, I, I'm looking at this now and, uh, and there's, there's this guy, Keith, that I, that I follow on Twitter and for charts and stuff. And I mean, the chart that he just posted, uh, I mean, basically he's saying that off that bottom had that big volume day and, uh, yeah, I mean, wow, this is. Dano might have found himself a multi bagger. Yeah, next day, dude, and you, you know what? Right whenever there's a GameStop and an AMC, always a supercuts. That supercuts I went to in the same mall as a GameStop and AMC. I'm, I'm not saying nothing. I'm just saying something. So you know, <laughs> uh, you know, fits the theme. Long, long uh, haircuts, all, all 2021, 2022. I love it. <clears throat> um, but kind of going forward, uh. I saw a tweet that kind of inspired the the real point of this episode being like the past two days is why we trade so hard the past couple of weeks. Basically saying it was so hot then you always got to go hard when it's hot. But, you know, when it's cold, you have to understand, hey, you know, this this is it. Not going to make as much money now. So where do you, like, where is the line? How do you ever, like, pull out? How do you, I mean, you know, this is a, a going and raw podcast. So knowing when to pull out, obviously, is, is a massive thing. I mean, and when you're starting to feel that load coming, when do we pull out of the market? Yeah, so the the, the first thing that I'll say is that is that it's really important to it's really important to kind of have a pulse on everything um and what i mean by that is that we can't just let ourselves we always have to have risk management in mind because that's always going to be the thing that will that'll be the only thing that pushes you out of this game okay Let, let me be clear the only thing that can possibly push you out of this game is if you screw up your risk management is so bad that uh, that you have no more more money to trade with. All right, let me be clear with that. That is the only time that you can possibly stop this game is uh, is when you have poor risk management. So the first thing is going to be is that <clears throat> what I consider a hot market is when there's tons of opportunities. So that doesn't mean that I'm going eighty percent into a day trade because everything's mooning. When I say a hot market. I mean that, hey, there's maybe 10, 15 trades where four months ago, there was maybe one of these trades. You know, now there's like 15 times that many trades for me to pick from. So I can, you know, sprinkle my portfolio across these 10 really high, high successful trades and, uh, and, and do well with them. You know, so I, so I want to make it clear that, that it doesn't necessarily mean like, like, yes, it does mean that to a degree, everything's going 100%. But to me, what a hot market means is that there's 10, 15 things that are going 20, 30 percent because you never want, again, you never want to get into a situation where your risk management is super off. So uh, the time to know when to pull out is, is that when you're checking the market and it really feels like nothing's really going, I mean, you can feel the volume when there's no churning going on on the stock and there's nothing really happening. 
that's one of those times where you know you can you know you can feel when the volumes lifted out um you know maybe there's 30 million shares traded before pre-market usually and today there's only six million and the next day there's only five million those are the times where it's like okay you know what i can i can de-risk a little bit so you don't necessarily have to feel it although i will say that you can start to feel it at some point but the one thing is that is that you can definitely you can definitely have certain indicators like the volume in pre-market or the regular volume or just in general social chatter i mean if <laughs> did some days trading is literally going uh viral on twitter or is that the right is that the right word i mean viral? it'll trend i mean you'll see trend, trade, that's like, what i yeah, mean stock like stock hashtag stock market I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah like when stock, stock market. market is 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 you know trending sorry i can think of the word and uh, when stock market is trending, that's when it's like, oh, okay, like there's a lot of traders in the market, especially when crypto is pulling back because less people are focusing on, on crypto, more people are coming to the market. So that is that is definitely the the two indicators that you can use that kind of say to yourself like, oh shit, okay, like uh, yeah, maybe it's okay, maybe it's okay to take some money off the market. And overall, it just a rule of thumb: if you're up like more than thirty or forty percent in anything. Like take just take some off, it, like that's like probably the best rule of, rule of thumb for anything. Yeah, I mean even hot market or not, I mean knowing just hey, I'm still gonna follow some form of rules is always gonna be yeah part of part of your best bet. I mean because I mean you see it you see it all the time, especially when when you're holding them into like the transition from hot to cold market. And you're like okay, I'll just keep adding these dips, I'll keep adding these dips. And you're like fuck, dude. The, this dip is never ending. I think that's when most people really get into a, I just lost all this money I made during this hot market. So, I mean, just, just going through that, I think is going to be the, the best, the best way. And what do you think about, you know, selling some of these, maybe not for a loss, but lower than you were happy or selling them? Because I mean, let's say you have a stock, it goes from four to six. I mean, you, you scaled out a little, but now you started to add a bit on that dip down to like, 550 now five now it's like 475 again you're getting a little worried you know you can still get out for a little profit but but where do you kind of see that line of finally accepting to yourself and be like fuck dude i'm just gonna i'm gonna make sure i get out with some profit because right now if this trend keeps up i'm gonna lose it all uh yeah i mean the first thing is that is that let's just say that you missed your original exit so um uh when 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 you miss your original exit, that's really tough because all you want is that to go back up to that area so that you can sell. And I totally understand that. But that is when you need to, that's when like the growth needs to come in and you need to say to yourself like, okay, I, uh, I need to understand that I missed my exit. Um, so now I don't, now, now I'm not going to be able to sell it for that you know, for that higher price, but that's okay. And, you know, I'll get them next time. Like it, like it truly is cliche and corny to be like, oh, I'll get them next time. But that is truly how you need to think of it. Because, um, because the, the waiting game for it to, you know, get the waiting game for it to go back up there is not going to, is not going to get you back up there. Um, I, I mean, uh, that, that it's not, it's not. And then you get into this, into this bad situation where, um, you know, you're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting, and then you end up screwing yourself and, you know, then it comes back down to support and then it's on support and you're, you really don't know what to do at this point because if it holds support and goes back up, you're going to be pissed if that you sold. But if it breaks down support, now you just turned a really green trade into a red trade. And so that's like, like all of that is so sticky and dirty and nasty and I hate it all. So rule of thumb is that, when you see a, you know, three or four green candles in a row and just like, you know, like you're like, this thing is like five, 10% above VWAP, sell half of your position, especially if you're day trading. Um, because at the end of the day, even if it goes higher, you're going to make more money. But, uh, but if, again, if you get into the situation where, you know, big exhaustion, kill candle, 
okay? It starts to come back up. You get happy. You get all excited. Kill candle again back down to support. Now you just let that green trade go to flat. You're super excited. You know, you would go from super excited to like, damn, I don't know what to do here. You know, that's just a sticky situation. So if there's tons of volume, you're in on the day trade, just sell half on big exhaustion um, and even on a kill candle. When it, when it kill candles and then it comes up a little bit, back up a little bit, scale some of your position. Just do it. Yeah. No, never, never opposed to scaling at all for me. Um, but okay, uh, kind of transitioning to something we know less about. Um, Bitcoin's actually down around what, like fifteen percent, maybe like twelve percent in the past uh, week or so. Hit around the seventy mark. Definitely hit sixty nine. Uh, down to around sixty k now. Do you have any thoughts on that before we go into the fun like Tesla shit? Uh, no. I think that this is actually if I was if I was trading crypto, um, I would prob I would probably be adding to a Bitcoin pretty soon. Um, if it flushes down below like let's call it like fifty seven, I'd probably be adding to my position. Um, in fact, I might add to my Ethereum position, my my very small Ethereum position. I might add to on this flush because this might be one of those situations where um, you know this is the last flush and then uh, Bitcoin goes to one hundred k. Like I'm not I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that like. Like it, I, I don't think it's like I, I at least this goes time, to a I new don't, base of like seventy seventy five. Yeah. Yeah, like th like this is the time where like I can look at a crypto chart and be like, yeah, okay, now now this might you you might have found your you know your floor for that hundred k or for that eighty five k. All right. Well, with Tesla, um, so obviously you had the big dip due to uh -huh. Elon initially saying, hey, I'll sell ten percent of my shares, and then I'm selling ten percent of his shares. Um, you actually also saw a dip on Monday because um, on Sunday morning, he tweeted, uh, I forgot you were still alive at Bernie Sanders and followed <laughs> that up with, if you want me to sell more stock, just say the word. Went from 1,034 down to below 1,000, now back above 1,050. What do you kind of think about all this happening? If you were a Tesla shareholder, I mean, like, where where is your head at? Um, and what do you think about Elon said? So the first thing is that I, I never, I'm, I, I'll, I try to never, uh, come at somebody who is inside like a c celebrity type position because those guys are always, 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 always being critiqued. Um, I mean, <laughs> for the little, little bit of fame that PGIR brings, uh, there's times where, you know, I mean, I, I've been like, like I, I really just need to put my phone down. So uh, being the richest man alive, being probably one of the greatest entrepreneurs uh, of of at least our time, and uh, and also you know, <laughs> kind of having a grudge against the world from being picked on when he was young, I am not going to sit here and critique that man. But the one thing that I will say is that I I kind of like the Twitter poll. Um, I didn't love the his brother selling the Friday before, but the whole Twitter poll, like, can I sell thing? I thought that was genius. Like, he's asking his shareholders, like, hey, is he? But he's not asking shareholders. He's asking Twitter. You know, just because you have Twitter doesn't yeah. mean you own a Tesla share. That's a that's a good point, and maybe that's like another way that like, I, and I have no idea how you would exactly do it. Um, in fact, I I don't even know like how that's really legal. Um, like how he can do that, but what whatever. It, I mean, I don't care. I think it's sick. I think it's so cool that that we have that we live inside the type of world and we live inside the type of market where you know the CEO can just tweet. Uh, you know, to what thirty million people, and ask them if it's okay to, and who knows? Like, they're like there are probably people that voted that uh that aren't shareholders. But at the end of the day, I think it's a really cool concept that he's asking the people that he essentially works for, the shareholders, if he can sell. I I love it. I think it's a really cool concept. Um, and and at the end of the day, the at least the Twitter poll said that it was okay for him to sell ten percent. And here's the thing, okay. He knows that the valuation from any valuation metric that uh, that the stock shouldn't be up here. Okay, he's not an idiot. Uh, number two, I think we talked about inside the last episode. You know, he's not a super flashy guy. He doesn't own fifty thousand billion homes, and uh, and you know he doesn't and he doesn't wear like you know five million dollar watches. You know, so like the chances that this stuff all goes to like goes to materialistic things probably pretty small. But uh, the what, fact he doesn't have a Gucci belt is so gross to me. 
I can't, man. You, you should tweet at him and send that you want to send like, him a Gucci how am belt. I gonna, how am I going to trust like a CEO <laughs> and invest in his company if he's like out here rocking like a Levi's belt, you know? Oh, I can't, man. <laughs> so, well, that, well, see, but that's what I mean is that is that like, you know, he's not super flashy. Like at the end of the day, I really like him. I think his heart's inside the right place. I think he gets super passionate because you got to remember, he's the richest man on earth right now. now is, it, is it in cash? No, but who the fuck cares? Cares. You know, he's the richest man on earth right now. So every time that someone says something along the lines of like, we need to make the rich pay, yeah, he probably feels some type of like, yo, what the fuck? Like, why are you coming at me? Like, I didn't do anything to you, Bernie. You know, like, I, like I, I'm feeling the burn, you know? All right. Well, um, we'll see. We'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll continue the Elon segment because he has been on one the past, you know, week or so with, with some of I these tweets. I love Elon, man. Yeah. I, I love tweeted Elon. like inflation is making 420 more six nine or some shit like that. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> he's off his rocker, man. Um, yeah. Lost his marbles. Uh, so last week, we can kind of go over one little thing, and this is an open-ended question. The users can make sure they uh, respond. And, uh, and then it's what we would tell ourselves as traders five years ago. Uh, mine would probably be start trading and buy Tesla. Um, but, you know, uh, I'll give you a second to think, and I've already got mine. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and imagine it less so of five years and more so of when I started trading. Um, okay. And it'd probably be take less focus off of letting one play change everything. I remember the day my trading changed for the better was after I sold GHSI. And GHSI was just some swing that was being called in, in BSS's chat. And for some reason, it I was just like, this is what's going to take my account from 2000 to 4000 or, or 5 or whoever knows how much it would have taken my account to at the time. But any any trade in anything else and this was the hottest market like ever it was it was you know uh like the covid market and any profit i made off of day trading like mark and everything by their tweets every day from 30 cents 36 cents to 40 cents or whatever i would just and always put it right back into ghsi and i was just i'd, I'd see it even go up to 20 percent days and 30 percent days and all this stuff and i would just never ever take profits i was just so like so tunnel visioned on just one stock and and the day i sold it i just remember everything turning around so, so i mean ju just understanding like one stock especially when you don't know anything about like <laughs> is gonna change everything is was just such like a far-fetched thing to me now <clears throat> and even if if i did like the movement was great i just didn't scale out i think the thing that i would tell myself five years ago is uh to trust the process more and not worry so much about making money um i remember you thinking when i used to make 50 or 60 dollars literally by luck thinking like okay this is where it turns around you know like i got superstitious to the point to where it was probably almost unhealthy uh like okay now that i've made a green trade now it's all uphill from here when in reality i really didn't know much about what i was doing um so i would tell myself to focus more on the process and more on the strategy and less on the profits or or trying to make any money um and and then the other thing that i would tell myself is is i would just continuously tell myself like like it'll all work out. Like this is worth it because th there. I mean, there were plenty of times where, although, although, I, and I talked about this a few times. Although I was making, although I was making some money, um, you know, it was never enough to where I could be like, okay, I, I, I can do this after college. Um, the other thing is that, uh, is that I doubted myself a lot. So even though I was having a great time trading and stuff. You know, I doubt I, I had constant doubt. Um, and, and so I would just continue to tell myself, like, it will be worth it. Trust the process. Um, you know, it will continue to work out like and and, you know, and so far it has. Uh, that was like the biggest thing was that, you know, I let I let a lot of people get into my head that uh, that I probably shouldn't have let to get into my head. I kept trading a secret for for a really, really long time. And then uh, and then when I started to do well and make, you know, my like I was making six figures and I was still letting people who, you know, I had, 
I I kicked their ass in net worth and you know that's that's nothing to brag about but you know I mean I was letting people who had never traded before tell me as a six figure trader uh that I shouldn't be trading and that it was stupid and that it wasn't and that there was no longevity so uh yeah those are probably the three things is that uh trust the process over the profits um you know continue to not let people you know continue to not let people inside your head and uh know that it'll all be worth it and then uh yeah i mean that's pretty much like that that's what i would tell myself for sure yeah i think another thing that that you need to just absolutely hound on to like my younger self is like compounding regardless is good like when when you're scaling out your you know your position is getting smaller but your account the money in there is getting bigger. I think that's what you really need to understand is, hey, even if this does go another 100%, yeah, I, I'm, I'm missing out on a little. But if it goes down 50%, this is secured. I'll, I'll never, like, this is this is mine now. And I think it, I think that's a big thing is understanding, like, you know, the big red days, yeah, they're going to happen and everything. But when you see money on the table, be, be very happy to take it. You ever show me this money two years ago, I take it way, way, way sooner just because of the amount. I'm like, you know, you have to keep things in perspective. And, you know, I think realizing that is, is such a big thing. And I'd love to hear, you know, all the listeners, uh, what, what they would, you know, change five years ago or when you first started trading. Yeah, DM us or, uh, or reply or to leave the tweet. Yeah, leave them the in tweet. the replies to the tweet. Yeah, and we'll read a few of them on, uh, on Sunday's episode. Yeah, and we'll, we'll go over and, and see, you know, if, if we had any any similarities in ours. And uh, also, and, and we love the responses to the Kerry Palmer interview. So uh, make sure to drop some, uh, you know, some, some traders without the biggest following that y'all want us to interview so we can, uh, you know, get, get some different voices out there. We don't always Elon want Musk. to have it the same people. Yeah, Elon Musk, small trader. <laughs> um, so, Bro, so you, you know he traded Bitcoin. You know, you know damn well that motherfucker was trading like 100 Bitcoins at a time. Sitting there like buying a hundred bitcoins, you know, sending out a tweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sending out a tweet like, ha ha ha, gotcha. That's 300 grand right there, bitches. (laughs) He's like, ha, catch me now, Jeff Bezos. You (laughs) can't. He's building a base. Yeah, he's like texting Bezos on the side like, just made another 300 grand, bitches. (laughs) He should just go long in Amazon stock too, just like, just to secure the fact he's, so if it goes down, like it's going down with Bezos. So it's like, just to secure Ahead, Put the exact amount of money that uh, yeah. Bezos ha- Bezos' net worth into Amazon, so that no matter what. Yeah. All right, boys. Well, uh, we enjoyed this Wednesday. We hope, or, you know, well, it's Tuesday, but we hope the market gets super hot and uh, we just had a little breaky break, but uh, we'll be back on Sunday to discuss it all with you. Thanks again for listening and make sure to rate us five stars and check us out on YouTube. Peace. Booyah. Penny's Going In Raw is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.